We're going to be doing a very in-depth uh, explanation on the entire angle gear assembly process. This is going to be from start to finish, including replacing all the bearings, setting up the case, uh, setting up the backlash, the gear tooth contact pattern, and all of the stuff you need to do in order to use this case. It's going to be very detailed and kind of act as a, uh, you know, step through tutorial on how to set this case up if you do buy one, um, if I decide to sell them. And again, you have to set this case up right. Um, I'm probably not going to offer setup. This thing has to be set up right. Uh, you can't just slap the gears in and off you go. There's a lot of special tools you need, a lot of special bolts. And I'm going to show that entire process in this video. So let's get into it. So I have a whole ton of components um, that are going to be going into this case. Obviously, we have the case and the case plate. We already went over a lot of this in the previous video. Um, we also have the ring gear bearing preload adjuster. This is brand new from Volvo. And um, this comes with a, uh, oh, well, it doesn't come with an O-ring. You have to buy an O-ring um, and also a seal for it. So we have all that stuff in this box. And we also have all the ARP hardware we need. We need a 15 M8 by 125 by 30 ARP bolts and we need two uh, M6 by one bolts for over here. These are all ARP 8740 chromoly. These are very, very strong bolts. You need to use ARP bolts because they're the only ones that are gonna fit these little cutouts and also the strongest. We have all brand new bearings. We have brand new uh, ring gear bearings. I think those are these ones. No, those aren't the 80 or the 32010. Uh, that's not it. There's some 32010s in here somewhere. 32010s are the ring gear bearings. And then we have an inner and outer pinion bearing, which are actually the same as the uh, rear diff bearings that are in the rear diff. We also have all the new seals and everything. We have um, also ARP studs. I bought ARP studs. They're M10 by 15. This side is gonna go into the transmission. And then these are M12, or uh, sorry, M10 by 1.25. So we have, these are actually ARP 2000 studs. These are the strongest studs you can pretty much buy like in the world uh, easily. And we also have the nuts, the washers, all kinds of bearings, seals. And we have a new uh, ventilation port for here. And we also have the oil feed. This is just an M6 by 1.0. And I'll show more on that lubrication system later. But I have the case um, set up pretty close from the previous video that I did. This is the gear set I'm gonna be using. It has perfect condition splines and whatnot. And you can see the gear tooth contact pattern. Uh, the backlash did tighten up a little bit. So what I did is I got another shim from another angle gear and I um, cut it down to exactly one millimeter. I had a machine shop do it on a surface grinder. And now we're basically gonna fine tune that. That gave me about 7 thousandths backlash. So we need to fine tune that down to about uh, 5 thousandths. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all the bearings off of the ring gear, the pinion, replace all those, replace all the races, and then check the backlash and um, ring gear or the tooth contact pattern again to get a baseline. And then we can start dialing all that stuff in. So in order to pull all the bearings out, you need to get one of these bearing separator and puller sets. I just got a Harbor Freight one and I've used it a whole bunch of times on the rear diff and it works great. And here you can see for this side, you actually have to set the puller up. You have to flip it around backwards or it won't clamp on under the bearing right. And then we just set this up. We got a socket on here. We got a lug nut in here for it to press on. And now I'm gonna turn this down with the wrench or maybe hit it with an impact and it's gonna pull the bearing right off. Side's a little more frustrating because you can't use the bearing puller um, and get it under there. So basically what you gotta do is just cut the cage with some snips and pretty much pull the cage off with all the rollers. And then we can grab around this part right here where the rollers ride on and pull that off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that since that's a two hand job and throw all that junk out and get it pulled off. This is what the gear without the bearings looks like. You can see it's quite dirty, so I'm going to prepare a ultrasonic bath. 
get the entire thing uh, ultrasonic cleaned, hopefully remove a lot of this rust. And while that is going, we are going to pull the pinion out and pull those bearings off. We only have to pull this one off because when we press the pinion out after we take off the companion flange, um, that bearing uh, in here just you know comes off when you push the uh, pinion out because you're basically pushing the pinion out of the front uh, or out of the outer uh, pinion bearing. So let's get this going, get this all cleaned up. I'm gonna clean this case up a little bit. We can put all new bearings on it. We can uh, reuse the shims that are already in here, check our contact pattern and backlash and adjust from there. Our pinion uh, depth is gonna be pretty perfect. I have it shimmed right now at 1.4 millimeters. All we need to do is just adjust the backlash a little bit um, because you can see our pinion depth is perfect based upon um, that this mark is perfectly in the middle of the, uh, the root and the top. We just need to um, center it a little bit more that way towards the uh, toe um, by increasing the backlash because when I did this pattern check, the backlash was uh, pretty tight because we changed gear sets from the last uh, you know check I did with the shims in here when I had the uh, test gear set in the first video so hopefully that made sense but let's get this all cleaned up and ready to go remember kids always use your safety gear I was using the press to get this one out because it just would not budge and I got it started it was going it was going and then freaking a little piece of the bearing actually explode it but i have my face shield on and uh i was standing away and i didn't get hurt at all i mean it was just a little shard that shot out but now that i have it off a little bit i'll try and secure the clamshell puller under it and pull it up or well push it down that way but be careful when you're using these presses these things are no joke and yeah of course it wasn't recording i mean it really wasn't anything crazy it was probably maybe like 500 pounds of force nothing at all but just be careful with these presses guys they're uh no joke you got all the old races out of the case they all come out pretty easily um you pretty much just got to tap them from behind heat it up and tap them out but i wanted to talk about the pinion shims so this is the original shim it's like 1.8 millimeters um, and I already did all this setup a while ago, so I'm basically going to tell you what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with a 1.1 and 2.2, so that's going to give me 1.5 millimeters of shims on the pinion side. And that's going to get our pinion depth pretty much perfect. I think whenever I set these cases up, I'm always going to be able to use 1.5 millimeters for the pinion depth shim. And then basically you're just going to have to fine tune the uh, ring gear shim to set the backlash. And that should pretty much give you a perfect contact pattern every time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the 1.5 millimeters worth of shims in with the new pinion race. Uh, the new inner pinion race. I'm going to put the new outer pinion race in. I already have the uh, ring gear preload adjuster race in. So the plate's all good to go. Um, so I'm going to clean up these bores a little bit. Oil them up a little bit. Heat it back up. And put all of these races back in. I got the gears and the ultrasonic over there. And I'm gonna finish cleaning those up and we'll slap this together, check our backlash and do a contact pattern check and see where we are. And I am 99% sure all we're gonna to have to do is take a little bit off of the uh, ring gear shim, probably about 0.05 millimeters. It's exactly one millimeters. I had the shop surface grind it to exactly one millimeter. So I think 0.95 should get that backlash right at uh, five thousandths of an inch right now it's at about seven or eight thousandths of an inch with a one millimeter shim so let's fair us all back together and keep going the reason why these shims are used is for variances in the case the gears are extremely pre precision ground and machined and the top it's probably like probably like more probably like five ten thousandths of an inch tolerance on the gears if not more the cast cases are probably ground with a couple thousand, probably like five thousands tolerance. So what they do is since there's such a large variance in the cast case, you have to basically shim the gears. But since we have one thousandth of an inch uh, tolerance on the uh, billet cases, and they're pretty much going to be exactly the same every time, you're going to be able to use the same exact shims that I'm using to set up my case because of how precision machined these cases are. 
you might have to adjust the backlash a few hundredths of a millimeter on the backlash shim. But the pinion depth, I think, is always going to be the same shim um, spec and everything. I don't ever think this is going to have to change, which is good because that means it's going to make setup really easy for whoever I sell these cases to, as all you'll have to do is just fine tune the ring gear shim to dial in the backlash and your contact pattern should be perfect other than that. The pinion races in, I find it easiest to use this press pull kit, this press pull sleeve kit. And you can see it does a very good job of evenly and quickly pulling in the bearing race. You can see it's slowly going in. So I'm gonna do that for both the inner race as well as the outer race. The outer race, you just, uh, race, you just basically put the uh, outer race in. You can pull it in using, I think, this exact size uh, sleeve. And that is the easiest way to get these in. You can also heat it up a little bit and put in some oil to help uh, evenly and quickly put in the race. And again, for the outer pinion bearing, I use the same exact setup. And we're gonna get our wrench. And it should go in easy enough that, as you can see, see it being pulled in. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this race in all the way, and we will have all the races in except for the uh, the inner ring gear race, which we will do next once the gears are done cleaning, and then we can check the backlash and gear contact pattern and see where we are. Putting on the uh, bearings are pretty straightforward if you have the uh, right tubes. Uh, you can get some exhaust tube that will fit perfectly over the bearing like this. It's kind of long and then I use a socket to cap it so that I have actually something to press on. But put some lubrication on it and you can see they press down pretty easy. So I'm gonna keep Keep going and get this uh, inner pinion bearing on. So I ended up getting these pipes at Advanced Auto. This is a one and three fourths ID pipe, 17621, that works for the pinion. And this, which I'm gonna show next, is a two and a quarter inch ID, 17624, and this is gonna work for the ring gear bearings. So just waiting for the ring gear to finish up cleaning. You can see, I put it, you can see how clean it came out. I, I'm putting it through some CLR, I got all the rust off the splines. I just got it so cleaned up and the pinion came out really clean too. But I'm gonna let this keep going for a little bit, make sure all the rust and everything's off and then we will press on those bearings. I seriously hate using that press because every time I use it, something happens, but this went pretty well. And look at how clean this ring gear is. I just got it really clean. All new bearings are in. So let's, uh, let's toss her in. Let's just give a little listen to the backlash. In theory, these are all the exact same bearings. I'll buy, you know, a different brand. I use all Timken. I don't, you know, use, Timken has the highest dynamic and static load ratings over SKF. Volvo uses SKF because Volvo used to be SKF. But anyway, let's wait for that motorcycle to go by. So you can hear a backlash. Sounds loose. It's definitely not five thousandths, but it's definitely not below five thousandths. It's definitely above. It's probably somewhere between five and ten thousandths of an inch. You can see it moving. See that backlash? I'd say that's probably somewhere between like six and eight thousandths, probably a little, probably closer to eight thousandths. So let's get our dial gauge on there 
And again, I designed this oil drain hole so you can actually put the dial gauge through it to get your backlash reading. So that way you can actually get your backlash reading with the case torqued down and the bearing preload set on the ring gear. So let's throw that in first without the case cover. Let's do a backlash check and then let's do it again with the cover and see how they compare. So it's pretty hard to check the backlash without the case cover on and to preload it because depending on how you push down on the gear, like you can vary it. So there you can see we have a lot, but if I push down more here, you can see there's not a lot. And then if you push back down over there, you can see how much you can vary it by where you push on the gear. So that's about right. If we push down on the bearing and kind of pretend preload, you can see we get eight thousandths, which is exactly where it was with all the old bearings. So that's good. I mean, when you replace the bearings, your tooth contact pattern and backlash should really never change. These bearings should be high enough uh, precision machine that it really shouldn't affect any of your gear setup. But again, it's always good to double check. So that's good for future reference. Um, once you have it, you could set it up on the old bearings, throw on the new bearings and just send it. I don't think you'd have any problems. But again, we like to double check. So we're at about eight or nine, probably closer to eight thousandths. So I'm gonna put the case cover on, put a couple bolts in, make sure it's preloaded and we'll check it again. So now you can see I have the unit flipped upside down, put the case cover on. I loosened the preload adjusting nut and then I retightened it until just when it stopped moving. That's basically zero preload. Any more is gonna start preloading it. We wanna have just a slight bit of preload on it. I put my brand new sleeve in here to use as like a little turning tool. And you can see we pretty much have exactly five thousandths of an inch of backlash. It's pretty darn close. That's basically exactly where you want to be. Five thousandths is going to be perfect for this little gear set. Um, so I think what happened is I basically cut that shim down or I had that shop cut that shim down to the perfect distance. Uh, the old one, let me try and find the old one. I think the old one was 0.9 millimeters or something. Here it is. I think this is the one. Let's um, get my measuring tool. I think it was, I'll try and do this with one hand. Okay, so that's a stock one, 145. Um, here it is. Here it is. So my old one I had at 0.84. Let me make sure that's right. Oops. Arr, it's running away from me. So I'll measure this um, when I can use put my hands and we'll uh, see what the thickness was. So I measured this up and it was about like 0.9, it was about between 0.9 uh, millimeters and 0.94 millimeters. So that makes about sense if using this shim, the backlash was a little too tight and uh, we got a different shim and didn't cut it as thin. That pretty much puts us at an even 5,000 backlash. So we might have got lucky on this one. I might not have to take any off that shim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check it one more time and then we'll do a uh, tooth contact pattern check and see how that looks. So we got our gear tooth uh, marking compound on. Just put it on a couple teeth drive and coast side. We're gonna put this in. We're gonna torque the cover down with a couple bolts and then we are gonna run it back and forth and then we're gonna see what this pattern looks like. I think the pattern is gonna be pretty perfect if our backlash is at five thousandths and we already know that our pinion depth is set up or it should be set up pretty damn close. So let's check it out. So I ran the gear tooth contact pattern and it is absolutely spot on. That's like textbook pattern. That looks so good. It's a little towards the uh, heel on the coast side, but we're really concerned about this side. So again, since this is a reverse cut gear set, the coast side is the drive side and the drive side is the coast side. So this is actually the side that's making contact when it is driving. So we're mostly concerned about this and you can see it's perfectly centered between the uh, heel and the toe 
and the root and the top, and that is exactly what we want. So backlash is dialed in perfect. The pinion depth is dialed in perfect. And you can see we have pretty much the same pattern on the pinion too. You can see it's centered, heel toe, root and top. That is awesome. So that's kind of cool that <laughs> just by luck, I mean, I got this shim correct um, at one millimeter. But I mean, I did so many trials before this with other gear sets. I'm not too surprised. So really happy with this. And I think this thing is pretty much ready to go. I think what I'm gonna do is put it, take all the paint off, put it back in. I'm gonna torque all the bolts, like actually torque them to spec, actually preload it to spec and do one final check. And then we gotta put in the crush sleeve eliminator like we did in the rear diff. And then we're pretty much done setting up this angle gear. It really didn't take too much time because I pretty much knew it was like 95% there. I just had to fine tune that one last uh, inner ring gear shim. So let's keep going. Putting all of the bolts in, the M8 bolts get torqued to 25 pound feet and the M6 bolts get torqued to 10. So I got all those in and I'm gonna check the backlash again. If the backlash is good, then we're gonna do a quick gear tooth contact pattern check. And this is just to confirm that torquing the case um, to full spec with all the bolts probably isn't going to change this at all. Usually it would get changed if there were bolts pulling on like the board, the bearing boards or something. But since these bolts are really only go to like here, there's really not much that it's going to be pulling on. And these bolts are definitely not going to have enough pull to, uh, you know, move the pinion like a couple thousands or the ring gear a couple thousands. So everything should still be in spec. So let's run the checks real quick. Backlash still seems to be at a perfect five thousandths. Looks good to me. So torquing the case didn't change the backlash. I doubt it changed the contact pattern, but let's run it real quick. So I got done running the contact pattern with everything all torqued up and as you can see it looks really good. It's pretty much perfectly centered between the uh, heel and the toe and the root and the top. And both sides look really good. So this thing is ready to rock. Torquing up the case really didn't change anything, which is good. Um, I didn't really expect it to because there's so much material around this pinion and these bolt holes don't really go that deep that I didn't really suspect um, that basically these two or three here were gonna pull the pinion out of spec too much. So everything looks really good. We got like five to six thousandths backlash and pretty much a perfect contact pattern. So at this point we can go ahead and install our crush sleeve eliminator and get all the shim set up for that. And then once all that's done, pretty much go ahead and do final assembly. Um, I think I'm gonna do this pattern check just one more time to double check. And if that's all good, we're gonna send it. So I went ahead and just one more time I ran the check and again, it came out great. I just, I wanna make sure this is perfect. You know, I want this to have the best possible chance of succeeding. And you can see the pinion, pretty much same thing, centered, root toe, or root top, heel toe. So I think she's ready to rock. And uh, let's get this pinion preload all set up and I'm really excited that this all is working out so far. Sleeve eliminator sleeve I'm using. It's the exact same one that I used on the rear diff um, because these pinion shafts between the rear and the front are actually exactly the same other than the gears are a little bit smaller in the front. But other than that, the splines, the threads, all the bearings and everything are all the same. So I was able to utilize um, the exact same spacer. And you can see, just have one shim here. The shim goes on there on the bottom and then Crush sleeve eliminator goes on there like that, and that will hold your bearing preload. If you use the original um, crush sleeve, it's possible that when you're putting a lot of torque through the unit from you know actually driving the car under really really high load, it's possible for that sleeve to crush and actually lose bearing preload, and your pinion will start flopping around, and your whole gear set's done. So I think this is really going to help with reliability, um, like a lot. So I got the pinion bearing preload set. I use these RA Tech 1131 pinion shims, pinion uh, crush sleeve eliminator shims. These are the same ones I used on the rear. Basically I used the combinations of shims and actually grinding down the pinion spacer to get the perfect preload. So what I ended up setting it to is about, oops, is about 25 to 28 um, inch pounds. 
These are the exact same bearings and it's pretty much the exact same pinion as the rear. And the rear was 21 to 39. So I went a little bit looser, um, but let's take a look. Let's see if I can do this without this rotating. So there you can see, it's just about under 30. So it's between like 26 and 28 Newton meters, or sorry, inch pounds right there. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Again, I'm gonna send it, set it under the specification for the rear because um, it's just a smaller gear set. So I guess I can go a little bit looser on the preload. And this freaking lawnmower is ruining my video. Anyway, preload set, I'm happy with that. I'm going to throw in the ring gear. Um, we're gonna torque this nut up. You wanna torque this nut to about uh, 80 Newton meters and that'll give you the right ring gear preload. And then we're gonna check the backlash and contact pattern one last time. And this thing should be ready for final assembly. Okay, so just to reiterate where we're at because of that annoying lawnmower, we have the preload set on the pinion bearings. We have about 28 inch pounds of preload. We have the nut torqued to 140 pound feet. Um, we have all of our cap bolts torqued to 24 pound feet and we have the preload adjusting nut torque to about 80 Newton meters. And now we are going to run the backlash check. And let's see what we get. Pretty much five thousandths on the dot. Looks good to me. So we got exactly five thousandths backlash, so our backlash didn't change from the preload, which I didn't expect to, because we already had this uh, these bearings preloaded a little bit without the sleeve. And we already checked it with the cap and all this torqued. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the contact pattern check. I already got a uh, marking compound on there. I'm gonna run things over real quick. We'll pull it out. And if everything looks good, this thing is ready to rip. And all we gotta do is uh, clean everything out, clean, uh, re-oil everything. We gotta put seal on here. Um, and after we put the seal on here, we're actually gonna retorque the preload nut because it might move the case like 0.01 millimeter or whatever the thickness of that seal is. It's not gonna affect any of the other setup. It'll only affect the ring gear preload. So we'll do the final ring gear preload at the end, um, but it's not gonna change anything in terms of backlash or, or gear contact pattern. And then we just gotta put the seal here, here, and obviously the seal over here. I'm still waiting for the one over here, but let's get this contact pattern run and we're pretty much ready to rock with this thing. And we'll also test out the uh, pinion lubricating system and play around with setting that up and whatnot. And she passed the check with flying colors. It looks exactly the same as it did before. Maybe even a little bit better. Both sides, it's just perfectly centered. That's as good as it's gonna get. This is like pretty textbook setup. And the amount of hours it took to get to this and the amount of, it took me like 10, I really didn't show a lot of the preload process for setting up the spacer because I went over it a lot in my rear diff build video. But like, it took like 10 tries to get it right. Just pulling everything apart, retorque and pulling, blah, 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 blah. And you can see it looks perfectly centered on the pinion too. I am so happy this thing, this thing's done. I mean, we'll just throw the seals on and everything. We'll put the new, I got a new uh, lock nut. Baba switched to lock nuts. So we're gonna do that. I was reading a little bit on the forums where people were setting the preload to closer to like 15 to 20 Newton meters. But the, um, that was for the S60R, like the P2 angle gears. And those ones actually use a lot smaller bearings, at least a lot smaller inner pinion. So I think it's definitely a good idea to go with the rear end specs for the pinion preload, which is 21 to 39 pound feet for new bearings or <laughs> pound feet, inch pounds for new bearings, because the rear and the angle gear on the P80 share the exact same pinion bearings and basically the exact same pinion other than this pinion, just a little bit smaller because you have a smaller uh, ring gear up front here because of space constraints. So, ah, uh, feels good to finally have this thing all specced in and like, it just feels good that everything worked out gear wise and gear setup wise. And the next thing we need to do is put all the seals in and start setting up the lubrication system and maybe doing some testing on that. Hopefully there's no issues with oil pushing out the front seal, but I don't think there is because I'm gonna run very, very low pressure. I actually bought like a little voltage regulator. So we're only gonna run like three or four volts through this 12 volt pump I bought. 
just like a little bit of oil, just to supply some oil up here, not forced oil, not pressured oil, just a slow, steady stream to keep things lubricated up here. Because so I presume that the splash lubrication, it's gonna get some through here and into here. And we don't wanna have any issues with drain back or oil pushing out the front. So we just want a nice, steady little oil supply up there. Um, other than that, things are looking really good on this, so. I'm gonna keep moving along with it. Okay, so I just wanna show basically two things that I need to change on the next revision. This version, just in conclusion, this version just came out so good. The bearing races fit perfectly. They have a really nice press fit. You really gotta heat up the metal to get them to press in, which is good because this is gonna heat up a little bit when it starts running. Everything fits perfect except for um, the seals. They fit pretty good. So the seals are actually metal seals and uh, it's a 65 millimeter outer diameter for this seal and this seal. And I think I made these bores just a little bit too big. They're 65.18, and I think they should be closer to 65.10. I mean, don't get me wrong, it takes some force, it takes a good amount of force to get them in, but nowhere near the amount of force that it takes to, uh, you know, get the seal into this um, uh, preload adjustment nut. I think the diameter should be a little bit smaller to ensure perfect seal. So I think what I'm gonna do is for this case, just put some of the Volvo pink stuff around the seal when I put it in. I mean, I put it in and I had to hammer it in, um, you know, to get it to go in, but it's nowhere near a regular metal seal where you really gotta get on it. And it wasn't like the metal seal that one in the rear diff and the metal seal that's gonna go in here, they're a lot tighter. So I think reducing this board to 65.10 instead of 65.18 is gonna make this a lot snugger. Um, but I'm just gonna put some Volvo pink gasket here just to ensure that it stays sealed and that it stays in. I mean, you can see it takes, your, it, it, it does take force to get it in. You can see, but I think it needs a little bit better press fit. And the other thing, because I do like sharing, you know, things that don't work out perfectly, are these bolts here, um, the little M6ers. They actually, you can, let me put the bolt in. Uh -oh. Hold on. Basically, the bolt, when it goes in, um, oh, that's not a good one. Let me find my other one real quick. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. Here's the one. Come on. Oh my gosh. There we go. You can see how the um, unthreaded part sticks out a little bit. If it can focus. And I'm basically just gonna fix that by shimming it with a few washers for now to push it out more like this. But in the future, I'll just have to make these holes uh, three millimeters less deep and that'll fix that problem. So honestly, two little small problems. Not bad for this entire case, which was an insane amount of work. And I mean, I wouldn't really even call these seals a problem. I think I just wanna be very precautious. I don't want these seals blown out, especially if we're gonna be running pressure in here. So I think for good safety measures, I'm gonna put a little bit of pink Volvo stuff on here and in here, and it's gonna be good to go. So I decided to go ahead and give my lubrication system a try. We got our feed, a little short six inch pipe. And this is like a little pulser pump, so it goes like dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig to pulse oil through. And if we look in here, you can see it's working. You can see the oil coming out of the pinion and it's so freaking cool. I put a little bit in there. I got this sealed up a little bit. I don't see any leaks out here in the front. So like, and that's like, that's like literally the exact amount of oil that I want. This little pump's perfect. It's like a little Magna Flow or Magna Flint little fuel pump and it's a little pulser pump and it freaking, it looks so cool so far. Like, look, you can see that's a decent amount of oil. Not bad. Maybe we'll slow it down a little bit. I bought like a little voltage regulator, but I mean, <laughs> look, you can see it. That's so cool. That's really cool. So I wanna hook my drill up to the pinion and I wanna see what the oil does when the pinion starts rotating. So, you can see running the pinion almost actually helps drain out the oil. 
But like that looks so good. Obviously there's gonna be way more oil in there. There's gonna be about three quarters to a full liter in there. But like, I don't see any leaks out of the pinion. Um, you can hear the little pump ticking away. That's like literally the perfect amount of flow. That's all I want. And that's at a full 12 volt. So I don't even think we're gonna have to use my regulator. And obviously, you know, there's gonna be more oil in there and we're gonna have crush washers here and up here. But like, this is the perfect little lubrication system and it all is nice and compact and fits right here. So that's really cool. I've been wanting to test this for forever because I didn't know if it was gonna work or not, but it seems to be working really, really well. So I went ahead and put a new crush nut in, torqued it to a 145 pound feet and I checked the uh, preload and let me get this in here with one hand. This is always a pain. You can see it's pretty much right there at that 25 inch pounds, which is perfect. So just got to slap this seal in. I got a little breather for up here too I want to put in. And then other than that, we just got to put the ring gear in uh, and torque down all those bolts and set the preload and throw in some Favo sealant. Um, so I am probably going to wait to do that um, because I'm going away this weekend and I want to get this video out. So I'm going to wait, but other than that, I mean, this thing is ready to go. The lubrication system is all working and then we'll get this thing filled up with some Redline heavy shock proof oil get the lubrication system all finalized and everything and tightened down and we can throw this puppy on and she will be ready to go. And I am so excited to try this thing out because our backlash is perfect, our contact pattern is perfect, everything fits great. We have our lubrication system tested, we know that's gonna work. And I think this thing's gonna do awesome and I'm really excited to uh, see how it performs. So I got the, uh, ring gear sleeve in or seal in that's all good i just temporarily put all these cover bolts on i hit it with some freaking mag and aluminum polish and like uh it looks like unreal it looks like a rendering i got a fingerprint on it but look, look at that reflection that probably looks awesome in 4k anyway getting ready to do the photo shoot for the um cover photo or the thumbnail and also for Instagram and my Facebook page. So just looks so awesome. I'm going to go ahead and do that photo shoot. Probably going to go home and do it on my uh, granite counter and I think it's going to come out awesome. So that's it for this video. Everything's good to go. We just got to put seal on and torque the bolts for good and this thing's ready to go and the lubrication system's good and I'm just so happy and excited to try this thing out soon. I, I literally cannot wait.